It was 1992 in Victoria, BC, Canada, and I was living the dream. Let's look back. I had just graduated from the University of Victoria and had set up my own illustration company called Head Cheese Entertainment, Inc. I had a small studio loft in downtown Victoria, and I know what you're thinking, the romance of that, and just graduating with my own studio, with clients rolling in. I had you know, models coming in to do, uh, you know, to pose as my muses so I could create this incredible art. Um, you know, just set up, you know, the, this bohemian lifestyle, you know, uh, cappuccino machine in my studio, um, you know, just taking breaks to enjoy the sun and overlook the city. Uh, just this wondrous, amazing artistic life. Except it wasn't. I was literally living on top of, uh, you know, a club with pounding music all night and I was sleeping in the loft on a bare futon on top of the bathroom, the toilet stall uh, in the bathroom in the loft. So it was spectacular. <laughs> it was great. I mean, that's... I mean, that's the true story of a starting artist's life, right? That's You're starting out, I think I was paying $400 a month for the studio. It was in this sort of rundown uh, place. Um, you know, again, like I said, I think it was on the fourth floor, third or the fourth floor of this building. I mean, I'll check the map out. Um, and there was a club underneath it. There was a lot of other sort of businesses around. And I was sharing the studio space. I was renting it, but I, I was subleasing it with a few other artists, um, one of which I'll talk about in a future look back uh, when I talk about Grendel Warchild, the comic book, the graphic novel that won the iStar Award. Um, but anyhow, so, you know, I'm a, I'm a young artist. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to manage my clients. I'm trying to, um, figure out what I want to do. I had some big clients and I had some small clients. Um, I was doing sports art, uh, but I was also trying to build a portfolio, as you would. My fine arts portfolio wasn't really going to get me any illustration gigs, so I had to build an illustration portfolio. Luckily, throughout university, I was doing lots of freelance gigs. I had worked for a bunch of different companies. I was doing uh, work for Monday Magazine in Victoria, doing covers and, and illustrations for them. And so that was great. But I needed to build a portfolio. And so one of the things I wanted to do was a sci-fi image. Um, and so that led me to this alien image, which is what we're going to look at. And I'm going to try and tweak it. I'm going to try and in some of these look backs, I will kick the crap out of the art <laughs> as it deserves to be and see if I can make it a little bit better. Uh, here and there, or at least give it a more of a modern twist. Um, so hopefully you enjoy that. So uh, so let's open that up and take a look. All right, straight away you can see there's some problems. Compositionally, it's pretty heavily weighted to the right-hand side. If this was a book cover, I'm sure we'd all be happy with it, but it's supposed to be one image. Um, I think if you look at space, I even replaced the space that I'd probably painted. Um, I think I probably took it digitally and, re and removed it, so that space is fake. Um, but the focus is on the, the fight in the front. Uh, I think the pencil crayon's okay, the ship design's a little distracting. The background behind the, the fight, the battle up front is too basic, but we're only going to be able to fix so much of this. So let's take it in and play with it and just modernize it a bit, um, you know, rather than completely reconstructing the image. First thing, camera raw filter, and then we scale it up and dutch the angle a bit to give it a bit more drama. Uh, speaking of drama, you can see that right away, it's a lot better. To push the drama even more, let's play with the perspective on that ship, just force it a bit more, push it further to the back so it's not competing. Uh, and then we've got a much bigger foreground as well to help with that. Darken that front right corner a little bit to get more focus on there. Add uh, more of a core shadow on that creature to really solidify that lighting that we have. Punch that lighting up just a little bit more in that area and then add a lens flare because that always makes everything, always makes everything better. So it looks so much better already, um, but we're gonna do a bit more. So we're gonna add a paint over layer here um, and we're gonna start punching up some detail in these areas. Just trying to refine some lighting and punch up some detail in these areas. You can see in the mouth area, it's really confusing what's happening in the face. I, I can't tell what's happening in the jaw inside the alien's mouth. 
I, you know, I, I don't know if it's the helmet or whatever. So we want to get some more definition and simplify in there a bit more so we can understand what's happening. I mean, just trying to define that upper palette, darken that, darken that, I'm just making some choices here. I want to really make sure that we can see the teeth. So I'm going to darken that highlight on the, on the helmet and the teeth are already starting to pop out, which feels a lot, just feels a lot better. Um, get a bit more darkness in there already. We can really see what's happening just far, far away. I mean, the difference is, is so much better. Then we'll just start playing with the lighting up here. And it's really, it's just about refinement now, refining the lighting, getting those shadows working, getting a bit more clarity in there. I have to be careful. I don't want to get too detailed in here. Digital versus pencil crayon. Um, so we could really go to town on this and, and punch it up. But I just want to give a, a quick overview of, of how to tweak this a little bit more. Um, so again, just trying to play with that gun and get some separation on that arm as well. Um, it's not feeling as round as it could. So let's get the shadow on the bottom. Um, and that's gonna help punch up and give us some separation between that gun and that arm even more. Get a bit more definition and make sure that volume's working. You know, it's feeling pretty flat, you know, uh, so we'll fix that. Dig in a little bit there so we can show that uh, the silhouette, you know, and the volumes and the detail on that arm. So that feels a bit better. Yeah, you just jump back and forth. You can see that's looking better already. Then just again, just trying to really refine the lighting in here, um, just to really sell that focal point, which is the, you know, obviously the face, this confrontation between alien and human in space for life. It's tough with a uh, colored pencil if anybody's used it, um, especially on that surface, it becomes pretty waxy. So at a certain point you can't, you lose your ability to add definition and detail, at least the way I was doing it back in the day. So I think there's far more spectacular colored pencil images out there nowadays, which is, um, you know, really exciting to see. You know, I wasn't that slick <laughs> with it when I was working on them. Now just trying to refine the hands, uh, again, get that lighting punched up. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful little drawing of that alien hand. So, I, you know, a little bit of emphasis on that is gonna make it feel a little bit more interesting. Um, and again, just solidify that lighting. I think that, you know, if you look at the alien pose, it's a little bit ridiculous. It's not very aggressive. I think I got it from a pose of some model on a magazine cover. I think she was laying on a bed or something, cradling a pillow. And so that looks like what's happening. This feels a lot more seductive than it does, um, than it does threatening, which is again, a lot of work to try and fix that. But, you know, we're gonna work with and tweak what we have right now and just try to, try to make it feel just a bit better. Again, play with those edges on that arm just to give it a bit more life and a bit more volume. Yeah, that looks better with the lens flare already. You can really get that focus. The mouth of the alien feels so much better. Look at, it was just a mess before. So that feels nicer already in terms of our focus and clarity. Just trying to play with that. I'm not really gonna worry about the ship too much. I think just cleaning it up a bit here and there. Yeah, I was thinking I might just increase, you know, push that line a bit more just to, to, to solve it and save it a bit. Um, but again, I'm not amazingly worried about that. We could do a lot more with that ship, but you know, we're, we're not going to do that. So now I'm just going to tweak that, tweak the cord, um, the cable that's holding the astronaut to the ship. Uh, just get it a bit more out from the ship to give it a bit more of a, you know, obvious silhouette so we can read it a little bit better. So I'm just going to paint that out and um, paint that in, sorry, and then just clean up around it just to clean up to make that work a bit better. Again, just really quick paint over here just to just to punch it up a bit more, a bit more drama, a bit better focus, a bit more clarity in areas so we can read the story more and, and really just hammer home the drama of this, well, the hoped for drama of this image.
that's feeling better already. So just clean a little bit more clean up on that. Just pick the colors a little bit more clean up. Again, I, I'm not going to polish this too much more. I'm just trying to find things that that again give us better focus, give us more drama. Just to punch this up a bit more, just to improve it. Five percent, ten percent. It probably needs a lot more work than that, but. I think I'll just make a brand new alien and it's my own alien down the road rather than, you know, really investing a lot into this one. But sometimes you look at a piece, an old piece, and if you've got the opportunity, it's it's nice to revisit and uh, go back and tweak some stuff. Adding a bit of uh, just a rim on that, just to punch it out a little bit from space, um, just to help a bit. And now I'm going to punch the whites down in the background again, just to keep make keep that saturation, keep that focus. Um, in the foreground as you want. There's no depth in space, really. I mean, there's tons of depth. There's no atmospheric depth, um, but we can fake it. I'm gonna fake it even more down the road. Um, you'll see that in a little bit. We're gonna use all those techniques, those, those, those imaging techniques that we can to try and punch this up and make it feel a little bit better. Again, continuing to push back the whites of the stars just so we can get more focus and make sure that saturation is uh, is clearly in the foreground and that's where our eye is going to go to. That high contrast you want in the foreground. So let's see what that looks like now. So there's the lens flare and then previous. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a big improvement. It's still pretty muddy. You know, there's only so much I can do about that right now. Okay, so still, still gonna play a little bit with the lighting here, um, just to punch out that leg area a bit more. It's getting a bit muddy in there, so we wanna, wanna make sure we can get that to pop just a little bit away from that gun. And again, I'm resisting the urge to add way more detail um, in there. And speaking of words, I'm going to add a little bit of detail to the suit. It's a little bit smooth and simple and chunky. It feels pretty cartoony right now. So I just try to add a little bit of wrinkles and detail just really quickly. Again, I don't want to go to town on this, but it instantly adds a bit more interest in life. And I'm not going to say realism, but the surface feels better, that's for sure. Again, resisting the urge to go crazy. <laughs> just finally, I want to bring up that bottom edge on the on the helmet, just to give it a bit more separation there and get that light working a bit better there, just for that focus. So punch up a top rim up here in a second. And just cleaning up the lighting inside the inside the mask, inside the helmet, sorry. Um, so we can read that face and that expression just a little bit better. Now again, just punch up and frame his face a bit more. A little bit more of a highlight so we can define that structure of the helmet a bit more, which is always going to make it feel better. One last thing. I think I'm going to play with the atmosphere, like I said, the atmospheric depth that doesn't exist in space, but I'm going to fade out and dark and lighten, sorry, the blacks in the front of that ship just a bit. I'm just going to paint over with a with a with a sort of a mid-tone blue. You can see that instantly it punches that focus up. And so I'll just clean that up a little bit. And that'll pretty well be all we're going to do on this image. Just doing a dirty mask here just to make sure we can keep that ship there. Yeah, see how that feels. Didn't work very well. <laughs> so I think I'll just erase around selectively in some areas just so we can see a bit more space play with my opacity. But you can see instantly that helps so much more 
to pull that push that ship backwards and keep our focus and again our contrast our high contrast in the foreground our richer blacks are whiter whites in the foreground to pull our eye Again, there's so much we could do on this, but I'm not going to do much more. Just make sure it's consistent. Punch it back. Take a look here and there. It's pretty well. It's pretty well there, I think. Just a, a few more little tweaks. You can see the difference there, uh, again, on that depth. Just, again, just I want to punch that space up a bit more. It's all feeling a bit foggy, so get a few more of those darks coming through in space. Get a bit more separation on the ship. And that should do it. The old one. And there's the new one. Okay, so I really hope you enjoyed that look back uh, and a little bit look at the process and a little bit of a tweak and a fix on that image. I'll be doing more of those as we look at some of the uh, other look backs to come. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and please leave some comments if you want to hear more about uh, my artistic journey coming up. If you want to see more in-depth breakdowns and paint overs, I definitely can do that. If you want uh, to have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, chat about your own artwork, um, you know, please sign up to my Conjure Academy for a concept art fitness class and we can really dive into your work. Thanks for stopping by. I'm having a lot of fun with these lookbacks. Uh, stay tuned for the next one next week.